Today, DJI released the RS3 Mini. It joins the RS3 and the RS3 Pro in DJI's gimbal lineup. I've had my hands on it for a few days now, and it's a really capable little gimbal in a compact and lightweight form factor. Here are a few of my first impressions. I want to start off by talking about what comes in the box. Of course, you start off with the gimbal itself. You also have a USB-A to USB-C cable for charging the gimbal, and a camera cable to control your camera from the gimbal itself. You also have a small stand with a quarter 20 thread that attaches to the bottom of the gimbal so you can safely set it down while it's powered on, a newly improved quick release plate, and two quarter 20 screws to connect to your camera. My first gripe with the camera comes from the quick release plate. I was really hoping to use the gimbal with my Zcam E2 M4. It's a micro four thirds cinema camera and it's what I shoot most of my videos on. It weighs only two pounds, so even with a small lens and battery, it would be under the 4.4 pound weight limit of the gimbal. Unfortunately, this quick release plate makes that impossible. The gimbal's designed around mirrorless cameras and creators on the go. So the design is made to work with only one screw in the bottom of the camera, and then it has a rounded placement guide that lifts up from the plate at the front. That helps prevent mirrorless cameras from rotating on the screw if you mount them vertically, which thankfully this gimbal makes it really easy to do. Unfortunately, it also gets in the way of connecting the quick release plate to either of the quarter 20 threads on the bottom of my Z cam. Now, if you're using any of DJI's recommended cameras and lenses, that won't be an issue. The Z cam definitely isn't the type of camera that DJI is targeting with the RS3 mini, so I can't knock it too hard for that. The next thing I noticed was a bit annoying. You have to activate it in the mobile app. When you start up the gimbal the first time, you'll be prompted to get out your phone and download the Ronin app to connect your gimbal and register it to your DJI account. You can bypass that screen five times, but after that, you'll be unable to use the gimbal that you paid for unless you download the app, create a DJI account, connect your phone to the gimbal, and activate it. Now, the app is full of great features, and the ability to move the gimbal remotely from your phone is incredibly handy, but I don't like that they force you to get their software in order to use the hardware that you already paid for. If it weren't for that software lock, the gimbal could function just fine without ever connecting your phone. Those are my two biggest gripes so far, but I've genuinely loved my time with the RS3 Mini. The connection with your phone is far easier than other gimbals I've used, and it's been very reliable throughout its connection. I haven't yet fully explored all the features of the gimbal, but you can set it up to do automatic panoramas, time lapses with motion, and automatic recording based on positions you've set up in advance. To control your camera, it can either connect over Bluetooth or with that wired camera connection. You can use the dial on the front of the gimbal to control your focus. I mentioned that the gimbal can support 4.4 pounds. That's less than half the weight that the RS3 Pro can handle, but the gimbal itself only weighs about half as much and it's dramatically less expensive at $369. It really complements the other RS3 gimbals in the lineup by offering a solution designed to be small for on-the-go work with compact mirrorless cameras to match. The whole thing is designed to be able to work one-handed. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing so, but when I was shooting one-handed on the gimbal and holding my phone in my other hand to film the gimbal with, it was still really easy to control. And that was with one of my larger DSLRs on the gimbal rather than a compact mirrorless camera. I'll definitely be trying it out with more cameras in my full review. Something that really stood out from the first time I used the gimbal is the strength of the motors. I've used other small gimbals where balancing has been much more of a concern, and the Weeble S I used would even hold the camera at a slight angle sometimes, having to be turned off and then back on to correct it. But here, even when adjusting focus or zoom, the motors were strong enough to make up for the changing center of balance. Balancing isn't too hard, and there's even a test in the app to check how well you balanced your camera. The RS3 Mini has a small touchscreen on the back to change the gimbal settings. There are a ton of different options depending on what you need the camera to do in any given shot. You can lock off the gimbal's direction, change the speed at which it tracks, and a ton more to get the exact shot you're looking for. The RS3 Mini has an internal battery that charges up over USB-C. 
It takes about two and a half hours to fully charge and can last up to 10 hours. For almost all use cases, that will be plenty. And I only just charged it up today for the first time. I took it out and about in nature a bit using my bike and in between shots, it was simple enough to turn it off, lock the motors in place, and then just throw the whole assembly into my backpack. It's really handy for single shooter on the go work. Despite a bit of a rocky start, my first impressions with DJI's RS3 Mini have been incredibly positive. I definitely need some more time really using it to understand all the benefits and drawbacks of DJI's latest gimbal, but so far I love it. With that said, stay tuned for a full, in-depth review of the RS3 Mini. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel for more.